Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to go over some basic Excel cell formatting techniques. Okay, so I've got a blank worksheet open, and my goal is to produce a monthly calendar, kind of like I see pictured over here. Now, I don't really care so much about the month or year that it is, but I would like to work on some cell formatting. And these are going to be pretty easy skills, but if you can do these kinds of things, then it's gonna, you're going to be able to translate that in to other Excel workbooks and worksheets that you create where uh, visual formatting is going to be uh, a good thing to do. And it is going to be a good thing to do almost every time. So I'm going to go ahead and select the, the first seven cells going across. And I'm simply selecting a range of cells by clicking in the middle of one cell, dragging over so that I have seven cells selected. And I'm going to do Merge and Center. So I'm going to use the Merge and Center option up here, which will convert that those seven cells into really one big cell. So now I have cell A1, and cell A1 is really big. Cells B1 and D1 and G1 no longer exist. So A1 is really big, and I could go ahead and type in uh, some information. So I'll go ahead and put in March 2020, which is when I'm recording this video. So now I have that information. Now already this date is not formatted the way I want based on my example, my sample here. And that's just a date formatting. Let me go ahead and fix that a little bit here. So I'm going to head over to my number drop down, And they do have some date options on here, but it looks like I kind of want something pretty specific. Let's see if they have it. I want the month spelled out and then the four digit year. And I don't see that. So if I don't see something that I want, you don't give up on it. Instead, you go for a little bit of a custom option. So I'm going to head down to the custom category. And I can actually type in a format that I want. Now watch this. I'm going to delete what I have in type, and I'm just going to do a letter M. And you can see in my sample, it gives me a 3. Keep in mind, the current month is March. Okay. If I type a second M, it gives me a 0, 3. If I type in a third M, it gives me March with three letters. If I type in a fourth M, I get the month March spelled out. So just by using these little type codes, you can format numbers and dates exactly how you want. And then I'm going to do a space. Now, without knowing anything, what can we assume for the year? Well, let me type a letter Y. Okay, That gives me the 20 because it's 2020. Uh, I'm going to type a second Y. That doesn't seem to do anything. Type in a third Y. There we go. So now I'm getting the full year 2020. Now, of course, we can also see down here in this example, it looks like four Ys should also do it. So I'm just going to type four Ys, even though it doesn't seem necessary, but it does make sense. Perfect. I'm going to click OK. And now I've got that spelled out. Of course, this one is going to be aligned to the left. So Merge and Center does center the content. But now I can go and I can change the alignment to a left alignment. And I can make the font bigger. And I can make the font color blue if I'd like. And I'll go ahead and bold it as well. Perfect. OK, so that's pretty good. Now for the days of the week. Now the days of the week are not going to be merged and centered, but starting in my cell A2, I'm going to write the word Sunday. I'm going to activate that cell, and using my fill handle, lower right corner of the active cell marker, I'm going to drag across and autofill the other days of the week. Now I can see these days of the week are centered, so I'll go ahead and center that. And I see that they're bold, and I'll change the color of the text to white. And I'll change the background color to a nice shade of blue. So that I can clarify that those are all centered, I'm going to select all of my columns. Notice when I select my columns, I'm literally clicking on the column letter and dragging across as I hold my mouse button down. So click on one column letter, drag across to get multiple columns. Now when I resize in between any of these two column letters, it's going to resize all of these columns equally. I'll go ahead and just kind of eyeball it so that they're taking up a nice chunk of space. 
but now they are going to be all equal widths. And in fact, I'll click on row number two. I'm going to make that just a shade taller. And while these cells are selected, or while the row is selected, I can change my vertical alignment of text. So now they're vertically centered. I'm going to do the same thing with this month, even though that's not going to have a big impact. All right. So now that I've got that taken care of, I can start working on the bigger cells. Okay, so I can see they're roughly square shape. So I'm going to go ahead and select my rows. Let's see, I need a one, two, three, four, five, six. Good enough. And I'm just going to drag these down, kind of eyeballing them so that they look kind of square. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I see there are some thin grid lines. Let me go ahead and select. In fact, I can select everything here. Actually, I will do all of these and then I'm going to apply borders to everything. So I'll use my border button on the home ribbon and I'm going to choose all borders. However, I do see that my border should be gray and maybe a little bit thicker so let me reselect. This time I'm going to go to all the way to the bottom and I'm going to choose the more borders option. So I want to see this borders dialog box. And let's see, I'm going to change the, uh, let's see, I'll keep a solid border. I'm good with that. For the color, I'm going to go ahead and choose gray. And then I'll choose outline and then inside. And that'll give me some gray borders there. Let's make sure those are selected. I think they're selected. We'll find out soon enough. Actually, I'll go a little bit thicker here for that style. Now I can really see it. Click OK. All right, I'm satisfied with that. However, I don't want to see any borders in between the Sunday through the Saturday and the days of the week. I'm going to go ahead and select those particular cells, head back to my borders dialog box, more borders, and check this out. Right here on my little uh, thumbnail, the little preview, I'm just going to click on that interior border, get rid of that. I'm going to keep the outside border, but get rid of that interior border. Click OK. So now the borders are gone from in between those particular cells, yet the outside borders remain. OK, so I've just added some numbers to my calendar to represent the days of the month and uh, March 2020, the first was on a Sunday, but I do want these numbers to be a little bit bigger and in the top left corners of the cells. I'm going to go ahead and select all of these cells. In fact, I'll even select the ones that don't have any values in them. And I'm going to go ahead and align them to the left, and I will align them to the top using the alignment controls in my home ribbon. And uh, while I'm here, I can go ahead and bold those, and I'll go ahead and increase the font size a little bit, but not too much. Now I can start to adjust some certain ones. I can select all of my Sunday cells, hold down my control key, select all of my Saturday cells, and I can see that the weekend values are a different color. So I'll go ahead and change that font color to a shade of blue. I can also see that those cells have a different shading. They're light gray. So I'm going to go ahead and change the fill on those to a light shade of gray. I'll, I'll go up to this light gray right there. And now I'm starting to get a similar look. Now I can see that this particular month doesn't really need this final row. Um, I'll go ahead and leave that there for now. But to finish off, I, would, I like this little notes feature. I'm going to select the last four days out of this block, out of this grid. I will choose a merge and center. And kind of like the example, I'll type in the word notes. Let me go ahead and make sure this is left aligned. And I see that's also going to be grayed out, so I will change my font color to a light shade of gray. Maybe not that light. There we go. And now I can start to have my calendar. If I want to get rid of that last row, I'm going to literally right click on that row number for 8, delete that row, and now my calendar formatting is pretty complete. So there we go. So just using some very basic cell formatting tricks, you can style your Excel cells to look pretty attractive and hopefully be easy to read uh, by your clients or for you. Take care.